Good afternoon everyone. Going to go over with you in this video how to do pre-plans in fireworks. What you want to do is log into the website version and what you all of your homes will default to the incidents page. Once you get to here, just click the pre-plan button up top. If you do not see the pre-plans, what you want to do is go to the advanced search and just make sure that the due date, user, and station uh, are all set to all or else you will not see any of the pre-plans. Once you have these set to all, hit search, and all the pre-plans should then come up. All the pre-plans will be assigned to each shift. There's roughly 70 or some odd pre-plans in the fireworks system. However, as you can notice looking down the list here, there are several duplicates. So as you go out and do the pre-plans, just go through the, uh, the pre-plans and Pick one with the most information. They all probably have the same information in there. Um, and the ones that, like this here, they're all the same. You got two different property IDs numbers. That's going down the list. So just do one of them and then notate the correct one with the most information, the one that's the most correct, and then we will. Um, review them when we're done and delete the duplicate ones. So I'm just going to go through and, and pick one real easy uh, to go through to teach you how to do the pre-plans. I'm going to pick the school. So what you'll do is you'll find your pre-plan and the form will come up just like we did in training at station nine if you were able to attend. The pre-plan summary will show up. Um, this is the Waze app. You can click that and it'll give you directions to the pre-plan. Down below, you will see a map view and several other options available to you in the pre-plan. You'll have a map version uh, or a map here to show you the property. And down below, you will have the ability to email and send this pre-plan with the attachments to yourself and or other people. At the bottom, you'll see the next time the survey will be required to be completed. It automatically default to a year a year from now. So if I were to complete this pre-plan today, then this time next year it'll be due again. Um, going up to the meat and potatoes of the pre-plan, what you want to do is make sure that you look at the map and make sure it is correct as much as you can. I can tell you uh, right now that the school is wrong. We have we know we've got a hydrant here and there's a hydrant on the north side of the parking lot um, and I feel like there's another one uh, back here yeah this one right here um, so I'm just going to go over with you uh, how to add different markers to the school so you want to hit the add plus button here you can add hydrants markers placards all several different things on fireworks so just play with that when you have time we're going to do real quick with the hydrant I know there is a hydrant right here in this corner, so I'm going to click that area and I'm going to type hydrant and hit. I'm not going to hit add because there's more specific information. I want to put the hydrant number and some other things on there, but you would hit add. And once you hit add, you'll get a icon, a hydrant icon, wherever you place your marker. I added this uh, hydrant earlier. So once you click the hydrant, it's going to come up with all the information for this hydrant. and this would all be filled out and you could test the hydrant. you could mark the in or out of service the bottom you'll see primary secondary number one secondary number two and all this is is when if this we got a fire at the school and we pulled up the pre-plan on the way there uh, we could mark this hydrant as primary so when we pulled up the pre-plan we could see this is the hydrant that we want to catch first and the secondary hydrant would be okay if this we couldn't get to this hydrant, we want to catch that one and so on and so forth that's what the primary and secondary uh, notifications are on that hydrant here. All right. Um, so that's how you were to add a hydrant. You can again, you can go through here and add all kinds of different markers, and um, you can change these to different icons to indicate whatever you're trying to uh, mark on the map. So just pick whatever is more appropriate, place it place it in the proper area on the map, and uh, you're good to go. The layers is what you're going to see on the map just like the freedom app the more layers you have the more things you see the less the less you see pretty simple explanatory there all right so that's that's short sweep the map there's not a whole lot to it but as you um, continue through the um, 
free plan, free plan process, just make sure you mark it as best as you can so that way if we have an incident, people can go right to what they need to see. All right, go to the next contact information. Um, I can tell you now that this is incorrect. Uh, Mr. Gore Broker just retired uh, last year, so what I can do is I can uh, demonstrate how to update this, and it's very simple. We're just going to take one name out and put another name in its place. So I will change, um, uh, I will take Mr. Gore Broker out and get the information here out. and change Mr. Elkins to the principal and that's the primary contact. Um, whenever we do this pre-plan, I would hope somebody would get this cell phone uh, because this school number is not going to get you uh, far. Um, anyway, that's as simple as it is. Put as many contacts as you want here, update the ones you have, and once you're done, you hit save, and the contacts are now saved. Once you complete the contact information, just continue through the tabs. Put as much information as you can in the pre-plan. That's only going to help us in the event we have an incident. Um, just come next to property details. You can put how many stories there is, uh, more information about the school specifically. Um, there is a risk assessment here. We don't really have to worry about filling this out. This is kind of the Glasgow comma scale of the pre-plan, per se. So we really don't need to worry about that. Um, you can put different remarks in here. Um, more importantly, the, the biggest takeaway from the pre-plans is just make sure you have updated contact information, the property details. Um, you want to come down to the chemicals and hazards. If there's a particular chemical, uh, whether it's in storage or in the building that we need to know, know about, that's going to have an adverse reaction to what we do. Um, your utilities, where your, your utilities are located at, Gas shutoffs, power shutoffs, water shutoffs, those those type of things are important. Any other contact you want to add to your list, you can put them here. Hopefully the goal here is that the information from the fire marshal's office will spiff over in our inspection and we'll be able to see that. So as they do their inspections, if something's wrong, we can see that. The access tab is of importance also. So that this, there again, it tells us how we're going to get somewhere or where, it's, where a particular item or access point is. Um, so just be sure, like I said, fill out as much information as you can on a pre-plan. It will only help us in the incident. But the highlights of it is your contact info, your access, your utilities, and your chemicals. If you can't find anything, I'll try to at least put some information in those tabs. Once you're complete with these tabs, you may come down and add attachments to your pre-plan. Now, attachments could be anything uh, from uh, the PDF document or a picture you take on a cell phone. Any, any kind of attachments that you want to add to the pre-plan, um, you go up to attachments here, add and edit attachments, hit your add a file, and you can put anything you want in here. Now, if you have a cell phone and you want to take a picture or a tablet, um, once you hit this, this will give you the option to go to that camera. So, once you're done with that, and once you're done with all these tabs, just hit submit, and you're done. It's pretty simple. Once you're completed all your free plans for your shift, then we should be good for another year. Like I said, we've got about 70 or so uh, entries here, but a lot of them are duplicates. So like I said, if you find one, uh, just pick one, put a note or let us know which one that you're using so we can go in and delete the duplicate one so we can reduce the number of duplicate entries. The goal of this is obviously once we get everything updated, we can give the certain individuals access to the preprint alerts. So once we get calls at a business, we will automatically get alerts from Fireworks that allows us to quickly log into Fireworks and access that preplan while we're on the way. So all the shift supervisors and all the officers will, should have this ability to get this information sent to their mobile devices. So with all this being up, then it just speeds the process up should we get a fire alarm or an incident that we need to find certain things at that property or get in contact with the key holder. All right. 
anybody has any questions about free plans, don't feel, hesitate to give me a call.